Good afternoon, everyone. This is Nariza Rashid, your host for today. We hold these webinars once each month, and they're free for all our, to all our members. Our webinars are recorded, so previous webinars are available on ASQ Lean Enterprise Division YouTube channel. Our topic for today, February 13, is Tayo Takata, and the presenter is Hank Zarnacki. The presenter for the next month, which is March, is Frank Madad. He would like to share with us how a ASQ LED is um, e-learning portal can be accessed and awareness on the ASQ LED division. Some logistics, everyone will be on mute, but you are free to post questions to the presenter, Hank Zanaski, as you think of them. Hank Zarnicki has reserved about 10 minutes at the end to answer your questions, which we will take one at a time. And here's Hank Zanaki. Thank you, Nariza. Um, as we look, right, we're gonna begin to look at an introduction to Toyota Kata, a little bit on us. I work for the Auburn Technical Assistance Center and we do outreach for lean, we do leadership, we do Six Sigma and ISO. So I will move on there from the uh, commercial slide. Um, we're beginning to look at, at lean and we're beginning to say, why are we doing this lean stuff? And I always, I always start this with the continuous improvement house so I can begin to say why. And we're not doing this for the tools, we're doing it for the results. And the results are to be improved quality, lower cost, uh, improved delivery, um, increased customer satisfaction. And as we look at this, as we start to build our house there, we're starting with our foundation. And our foundation is stability and standardization. It allows us to see normal from abnormal. It allows us to begin to define problems, right? So as we begin to see that, we have that foundation, then we can begin to address our quality issues, have built-in quality. We can work on our just-in-time. We can work on our demand. How do we build to our customer's demand? And then the third pillar out there is our people, right? How do I begin to develop my people, my team members, to become stronger problem solvers. So that's what we're looking at for our improvement house. So as you look at a, a lean transformation model, typically we'll have our process. In the past, those have all been our lean tools. How do we begin to apply some of the different principles and tools that we have within our lean toolbox? We wanna know where we're going and that's our purpose, our strategy. What's our direction? What's our true north? What's our vision or breakthrough objectives within there? And then the third piece out there for our transformation is how do we develop our culture? This might be our, our people, our operating systems. It could be our core values within that piece. So we know we're kind of going. We know our model within transformation. Now, when we look at the kata, and kata for those of you that might not be familiar, is basically a habit. How do we develop a habit? So for Toyota kata, really a problem solving and coaching kata out there, the habits that we're looking for and the habits that we're going to begin to develop are the process is now our four-step improvement kata. We're going to use that and we're going to try to we're gonna tie it into our challenge. Where are we going? That would be our vision. And then it would also be our target conditions within there. And then on the people side for the Toyota Kata. Hank, yes. can I interrupt you for a minute? I'm not able to see your screen. Is something oh. that I'm missing here or? Oh, good. We can see that now. Thank you so much. <laughs> and please, yeah, please. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just go back just uh If you can, uh, we haven't seen any, any this from the start, so if you can, appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right, so there's our lean house out there, just so you have the visual out there, our results, our foundation, our quality and our demand. There's our lean transformation, looking at the capabilities, the strategy and the culture. And then like I said, this is where it ties into the kata. 
our vision, where we're going, breakthrough objectives, our target conditions are all part of that purpose and challenge. Our improvement codars are four step, basically plan, do, check, act cycle. And our coaching kata is how do we begin to teach people the improvement kata? How do we begin to teach people to be stronger problem solvers? So. Now, just a little reflection. I always do like to start with some reflection out there on where we were. And as we looked early 90s, we really started to do a lot of Kaizen's, 5S, normal for abnormal. We, the book that was out there was the machi machine that changed the world. How does Toyota do it? If Japan can, why can't we? Did a lot of Kaizen's, war on waste, rapid improvement events, accelerated improvement workshops. And as you look at that, we had some really good results. We had some progress there. But when we stood back and we took a look at that and we said, well, we're doing all these Kaizen events. We have all these great presentations, our PowerPoint at the end of the week. Yet when we look at our financials, we look at the bottom line at the end of the year, the question always came up, where is it on our bottom line? So as we reflected in the early 2000s, 1999, Value Stream Mapping came out, Shook and Rother looked at the Toyota's Material and Information Flow Handbook, right? James Womack gave it the title, Learning to See. Sounds much better than Material and Information Flow Handbook. And we began to look at more of a systems approach. How do we look, thing, at, look at things from dock to stock, raw materials to finished goods, from launch to order, all those out there. And we, we made much better system type improvements. Um, then really in early 2010, 2009 is really when Toyota Kata came out. And that was Mike Rother. And he was really trying to articulate, try to codify on what Toyota does. What are they doing? What's a little bit different out there into that process? And as you looked at that, really began to address how do we get back to the basics? How do we become a problem solving culture where every team member is solving problems at an appropriate level every single day? How are we working to develop our people, the people side of lean? How are we coaching and developing them every single day? And that's really where, where we are now. And that really is the gap that Toyota Kata is beginning to fill. So as we begin to look at this and begin to look at how we improve, right? Over time, we started off doing a lot of projects. It took some time for the projects to take hold, to understand what's going on, to implement them. And then we began to make our improvements. Early 1990s, right? We did a lot of Kaizen events and rapid improvement events. And as you look at that, that was really some of our learning. So we stood back and we were trying to emulate Toyota and trying to say, Toyota does all these Kaizen events, we should also. But as you stood back and you began to look, the question is, and the question we asked some of the Toyota folks were, how many Kaizen events do you do within your four walls? And the Toyota folks said, well, we don't do very many of them. We do suggestion systems. We have a lot of quality circles out there but we do very few Kaizen's. So if you look at that, the, what problem were, was Toyota and other folks trying to solve in terms of a Kaizen event? Well, you basically had Shingu Jitsu, the Toyota consultants out there. They had a very short time frame that they had to go to their suppliers and make change, right? They went to the supplier, they had a week, they wanted very aggressive change, they wanted challenging goals, cross-functional teams, and be able to just do it, right? So when Toyota was doing Kaizen's within their four walls, they said, we do it for Kaikaku, radical change. And we also do it for Jishikin. We do it for management learning out there. But we really have the luxury to develop our team members every single day. Team members are with us every day. We have our coaching structure. Why would we wanna do this rapid improvement event when we can develop them a little bit every day. And that was really where Toyota Kata came from. And as you look at that, nothing wrong with Kaizen events. Very good business model. You look at different folks, say like a George Konensaker, 
uh, very relentless Kaizen out there. Um, works very well. Kata is just another tool in our toolbox. So as we look at these, we want to begin to use the tool. We want to use the tool correctly, and we want to use the tool to solve the correct problem. So as we begin to look at this, and we're looking at what makes us stronger for a company, it really is this long-term prosperity, long-term mutual prosperity. And we do that by solving problems. How do we improve our process? And we also have long-term pro mutual prosperity when we're developing our people. So if you really look at that intersection, that intersection out there is, that's the kata piece. How do we develop strong problems, strong problem solvers that are solving problems every single day? So as we begin to look at this, we begin to look at, oops, we look at our process. We're gonna begin to look at how we're improving what our thinking is, and that is PDCA. PDCA is the core of our daily work. Doesn't matter what level of the organization we are, it should be driving what we do. At the executive level, the senior level, we might use strategy deployment. All that follows plan, do, check, act. We might use our A3 process. Maybe that covers several departments. Maybe they look at some of the systems. Some of our daily might be some of our daily problem solving or even our daily work. Right. And that's the core of the improvement kata. We go to see, we grasp the situation, and then we follow plan, do, check, act, plan, do, check, act. So as we look at this and we begin to look at the Toyota kata, the improvement kata, it really is a four-step method for teaching scientific thinking, for teaching scientific problem solving. So as you look at this from Mike Rother, it's first thing is we got to understand where we're going. What's our direction? What's our vision? What's our challenge? And then how do I begin to parse that down into what I should be doing? So we know we're going big picture, longer term. Now we reflect, right? It's the check and adjust, the grasp, the current situation. Where are we now? We're going to go and see. We're going to collect data. We're going to seek to understand. We know we're going. Then we have our current condition. Once we know where we are for our current condition, then we're gonna establish our target condition. And as we do this repetitively, we're gonna then establish our next target condition. And then step four there is our executing phase. That's where we're experimenting into that process. That's where we're doing rapid plan, do, check, act cycles. How do we begin to stretch our knowledge? How do we begin to learn and how do we begin to improve in our process? So that's our improvement kata. That's our scientific way of thinking. And then as we look, the coaching portion of it is our five question cards. This is our starter set here. Comes from Mike Rother's website and we use it as is, as the starter set. But it's how do we teach that kata habit, that kata thinking breaking down a problem. And you kind of see that. It starts with the same pieces there. What is the target condition and what's the actual condition now? Target and actual. We begin to define that gap. That gap is a problem. Then we begin to address what obstacles are there. How do we begin to address one? What's our next step? What do we expect to happen by taking that step? And then the other, the, the last piece on question five, how quickly can we go and see what we have learned from taking that step, right? Rapid cycles of experiment. And you can see on the right side of the card, I think it's great as they begin to iterate and improve the card, they began to have some key points, some coaching key points that you can begin to use as your starter set, as you're learning to coach, begin to ask those. And then also, as we look at the coaching piece, once we begin to do some of the experiments, then we can begin to do the reflection. What did you plan as your last step? What did you expect? What actually happened by taking that step? And then what did you love? So we'll look at those. Now, as we look at these, these are going hand in hand. Coach and the learner, coach and the learner. Right, you have the planning coaching cycles. That's working with the learner to understand the direction, to begin to define the 
challenge out there. It's beginning to walk the process, go to the GEMBA, begin to understand the current condition. And that's gonna really lead to the coach and the learner working together to address the target condition, right? Here's a piece of the challenge that we would like to achieve in anywhere from two weeks, maybe to four weeks, six weeks sometimes. We really like shorter periods of time. Um, so that really is the planning portion of the coaching. And then you're running the executing the experiments, right? The learner is experimenting and the coach is working with them um, into that process. So in, as we look at this, the inescapable principle of coaching is we've got to help them develop the learner, their capability to think. We've got to develop their capability to solve problems, right? We're trying to have the learner begin to be a better critical thinker, a better problem solver. And the way we do that is we have to let the learner think. We can't tell them what to think. Doesn't work that way. So that's kind of the baseline for our improvement in coaching katas within that process. Now, kind of tying this a little bit to where we're going. And I really liked um, Aaron Lord, Lisette Contreras, um, Alan Nos, when they did their webinar, oh, a few months ago from Michael Kors. They really had the visual with a coach and a learner. They called it a navigator and a staff, coach and a learner working together, being on the same journey on a tandem bike and definitely see that linkage as we begin to develop stronger problem solvers, stronger coaches, and stronger second coaches. And as you look at that, as we're going around this circle, one, two, three, four, practice, starter, coaching, and mastery, that's really our development cycle. So the first two kind of fit together. We're gonna to do deliberate, frequent practice every single day. How do we begin to coach every single day? How do we begin um, to experiment. Sometimes we can do that. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. Um, and a lot of times with these first couple, you really have the coach directing a little bit more. The coach beginning to work with the learner um, to, to develop their information, their understanding of a system. So we have the starter kata, the five question cards following the improvement kata. And we really want the starter kata for the coach to follow that um, by the letter, really what we do. As you get to be a little bit better, right? So you have this information piece, then you have a little bit of the coaching, which I tend to say, this is a little bit more on the experimental piece, right? How do you begin to try out what we learn? How do we try out to be a better coach? And how does the learner begin to get a little bit better understanding the process um, and being a better critical thinker. And then you really get to the mastery side where you can really stand alone. This is where it should be yours, your company, your area. How do you begin to tailor it to your specifics? I'll look at this as almost like teaching your kids and looking at maybe for my daughter, how we would begin to teach her how to write papers. And you have some folks that will say, you just need to go to the mastery. You just need to start writing papers. And when we look at it, when I begin to look at developing my, my daughter in this case, is I wanna start her off with the informational piece, the starter Kaizen. Okay, this is how you outline your paper. This is what the body of the paper should be. Here's your topic sentence. Here's your main paragraph. Here's your closing. Here's the structure that you should begin um, to utilize. So they have that background, they have that foundational piece of knowledge and information, right? That's a starter piece. The coaching piece would then be for my daughter, now go ahead and I'm gonna give you a short paper to write on this subject, and I'm gonna see how you begin to follow the format, how you begin to write your sentences, how you begin to tie concepts together, and then I'm gonna to begin to provide you feedback there. And then finally, we get to the mastery where now I can give her a topic, she, I can turn her loose, and then she can come back to me and I can begin to ask her different questions. I can understand her thinking. 
That same thing as we develop our child, writing paper, sports, music is what we'd like to do here for our companies for Toyota Kata. So as we look at this for our starter coach, the informational piece, recommend learnings of a Kata coach is have a triad, have three people, a learner, a coach, and a second coach, right? All learning together. Um, really want them to follow and have the discipline to follow the starter set card, follow the question cards every single day. Build that habit. Do it every day without fail. Walk through the question, read them exactly as they're written, and that will begin to develop that habit, begin to develop those, um, those fundamentals. I want to be able to see. So really want to begin to say, now we have our process, how can I see easily, visually, what the learner is learning, where their knowledge threshold is, and how do they begin to easily communicate that to me? So in this role, the learner, I always say the learner has the pen. The learner is the one that should be writing up on the visual storyboard, the kata board. Why do we do that, right? I want to understand the mindset. I want to understand what that learner sees, and I want them to write it down. When they write it down, I can see it and I can begin as a coach to evaluate where they are. Um, a lot of times I'll say our ears lie, our eyes don't. <laughs> Sometimes when a learner is telling me something, it might not be entirely correct. When they have to write it down, then it changes it. Then I really understand what they have actually seen and what they're grasping. So or understand the dynamics. The coach typically at that starter piece is they know the five question card, right? They kind of go through it. They understand the purpose of each question. They begin to understand some of the linkages out there. And, and their goal a lot of times as a coach is let's teach the learner, let's develop the learner to begin to answer the five questions, to understand what the meaning are, meaning is for each question and then what the expectations are. And then even on some of the other side is the trust to sometimes say, I don't know, I don't know. And in this, the triad, the second coach out there, they're looking that the process is being followed. And then they're looking for knowledge thresholds for both the learner and the coach. So here's an example of a, a learner storyboard, a little different than what Mike Rother had initially put together. Here's our challenge. Why are we doing this? Why are we addressing this topic? What is our breakthrough objective? And, and just going back a tiny bit on, on this too, right? Our challenge is our cash register. That's really our return on an investment. Each experiment might help. Some we might go a little bit backwards, but once we hit the challenge, that's really our bang for our buck. So I definitely don't want as a coach to begin to limit some of the experiments because we don't think that would be the highest rate of return for our efforts out there. Let's go, let's do rapid experiments, let's learn and take what we've learned to quickly go to our next experiment, All right? Now, our target, we have our challenge and we'll begin to parse that down into our target condition and our target condition will really have our desired outcomes, our results, our metrics, maybe our product out there, maybe our uptime, something that's easily measured. And the other one it'll have within our TAR condition will be our desired operating conditions. And it was, it was really kind of, as you're learning this and beginning to see that, then all of a sudden it made a lot more sense, right? Where a lot of times those desired operating conditions might be some of our lean tools. We wanna operate on a one by one flow. We wanna have a, a build to demand. And I, I tie this back early to, to my career. I worked for a company, we manufactured shock absorbers, and we were really trying to implement a lot of the Toyota production system, really GM production system at the time. And we tried to put in a Kanban system. And as I look at that, I really look at that as almost a desired operating condition because we put it in and did it fail? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It didn't turn out like we we liked, but as we were beginning to iterate through and learning from it, we understood why it wasn't working. We understood what obstacles were in place to get there, and then we were able to address them. So 
while the results weren't necessarily there initially, we ended up getting there by iterating through the process. So we have our TAR condition. Then we have our actual condition, target and actual. We begin to define our gap, right? The definition of a problem is a gap from a standard, gap from a standard. We have our target, our standard. We begin to define that gap. Then we're going to begin to list our obstacles, right? And this is where we're really asking the learner to begin to write down to what they see. What obstacles do you see that are preventing you from reaching the TAR condition? What obstacles do you see that are preventing us from operating in a stable environment? So we're trying to grasp and understand what they see. Now, once we see those, we're going to begin to target our experiment. Which one obstacle are we working on? One really means one out there into that process, right? We're beginning to focus and we're really beginning to look at a one factor experiment. I'm taking this one obstacle, this one variable, I'm going to do a step, right? A proposed countermeasure. And then I'm going to have a hypothesis. What do I expect to happen? If I make this change, I expect this to happen related to my target condition. And then as we begin to look in this portion of it, we're going to do our experiment, do our coaching cycle. And then we're going to come back and reflect on what, what actually happened. Um, did the experiment work or not work out there into that process? And then what did we learn? What did we learn by taking this step? Um, and this could be, what do we learn from the experiment? Did it work? Did it not work? And then what else came up? What else did we see by making this change? And this should really be predicated and lead us to our next step, right? Our learning should tie to our next step. So as you look at this and we begin to look at our process out here, oh, the, the last thing too is we're going across. We're doing one experiment at a time. We're doing rapid experiments over and over and over. Um, we kind of changed the format a little bit of the learner storyboard very linearly into that process. Find that it really helps people to follow the flow. We're not going from the left to the bottom right to the top and then back again. Um, the, the learners that we've worked with really enjoy it and are able to see it. And of course, you know, our actual condition will have some of our graphs, our run charts. It could have some other data that begins to explain what's happening. All right. So as we're looking at this and we're doing our daily activity, what we're really doing is we're beginning to teach them that we're doing daily improvement. Um, and the top there you see in the red, that might be a three day Kaizen event. We do a three day Kaizen event. Hank comes in, oh yeah, we do a quick blitz, we make all these changes, we have a Kaizen newspaper, and then phew, Hank's gone, we take a little breather, and then business as usual, and then a next event comes in, and we begin to address that. What we're really trying to do now is we are trying to keep it in the forefront. We're trying to sustain it by always asking target and actual, looking at our daily improvement over and over. And the other change that we're beginning to address is with our people, right? The whole coaching structure from a learner out there to the middle manager, typically supervisor, that's beginning to coach and mentor and develop that team member. And the lean staff, which is starting to become that mastery sometimes. They're the second coach and really responsible for is the process being followed. And the second coach really should be outside of the process. They're outside of the weeds. They're not in the minutia. They're standing back so they have that 50,000 foot view to make sure we are following the improvement kata. We are following the coaching kata. Now, as you look at this, your starter set, you're going to begin to try. And I always kind of like a little bit of the Simpsons there, right? As you see a trying. Trying is the first step towards failure. Kids, you have tried your best and you failed miserably. The lesson is never try. <laughs> As you look at this, right, what are we doing with Kata? You're going to try this and you're going to fail. You're going to learn and we learn by a failed experiment. And then we're going to do it again and we're going to do it again and we're going to do it again, right? The only way we're going to become stronger problem solvers is to try to solve problems with the coach and a learner. So 
as we look at this and we begin to look at our starter set out there, reflections, um, everybody's different. We have different coaches, different learners out there, but a lot of our learners are gonna learn in different rates. They're gonna learn in different ways. So the cautionary piece there, don't assume that each learner is gonna pick up the kata process, the improvement in the coaching kata at the same pace. Some will be quicker, some will be slower. Um, you know, it does happen. Everybody kind of goes through there and begins to pick it up. Sometimes you have to be a little more patient than others. Reflections, sometimes the learner is uncomfortable with the coach and the learner beginning to look at their process, beginning to dig into the details. Um, it, it, it's interesting going through and, and, and being out here lean, doing this for a career. Problems are great. As you look at things, absolutely love problems. Try to understand gap from standard, what's happening here. Folks that aren't as used to that, a lot of times really take it as negative. Sometimes it's offensive. Sometimes it's uh, stifling sometimes in the process. So there is, there is a piece with the coach to really understand and convey, yes, what we're trying to do is see problems. We see problems. We can address problems with our countermeasures. We can become a stronger company, stronger problem solvers, and we have better long-term mutual prosperity. Um, sometimes people really want to have the answer. They want to begin to have their experiment always turn out to be perfect. And sometimes they are a little comfortable when they're discovering things, when they're experimenting with things where it may not be ideal. Um, and that's okay. That's not the expectation out there. Let's begin to set the foundation, the environment of trust in order to make that happen. Uh, some learners out there have trouble describing things in detail, critical eye for things or beginning to break those down. So sometimes that's definitely a coaching opportunity. Um, we've had some folks that the, the, the physical writing, a lot of times they're not comfortable with. Sometimes it's, um, um, a little bit of language difference can happen out there or grammatic differences out there. Um, so you see some, some sometimes some um, caution there within that process. Sometimes as we look at this, people aren't really looking at things in terms of logical cause and effect, right? Looking at that linkages out there. We're asking them to not make assumptions. I wanna see your linkage between this happened and this was the effect. Um, and then also with the results, some of that might be a little bit of nervousness if people have made mistakes in the past and being wrong isn't, isn't acceptable within your company or it's been punished within there. We had a, a gentleman the other day talking about his company and he said the plant manager called everybody in to a circle every single week. <laughs> and he berated everybody around the circle on everything they didn't do correctly that week. <laughs> and he was sharing that he didn't last very long in that company. He decided to self-select out. Um, and just another little cautionary piece with reflection with the starter Kaizen. I definitely recommend following the five question card exactly at the start of your process. Walk it through, get that informational piece, begin to learn. Um, but it's not forever. You do need to reflect, you do need to decide, do I need to update it? Do I need to change? What am I learning as a coach that I can begin to feedback and change and improve? Nothing wrong with that at all. Now, once we have the informational piece, then we're beginning to do the experimental piece as a coach. Right, a little bit more learning. The expectations on the learner are a little bit different. And these are ones where you're looking at the visual kata storyboard, right? Target and actual obstacles. Which one are you working on? Your next step. What do you expect? What happened? What did you learn? Do all those pieces fit together? Do they make sense? Right. Working with the learner, developing the target condition. Does that target condition really help you get closer to to your challenge out there? Is it easy to see the gap, target and actual out there? Um, tying it back to our learning all the way on the right side of the learner storyboard, does that learning actually feed back and um, uh, 
direct us to our next step within that process? Um, do our next step address one of the obstacles and do the obstacles make sense in relation to the tar condition? We'll definitely see those. And, and as we look at this, we look at this in terms of coaches, it is one-on-one -on -one, and just a reminder, we're not answering them, right? We're not suggesting, we're not analyzing them, we're not directing, we're not correcting. We are coaching, we are listening to our team members. You know, the learner typically at this stage, they're following the process a little bit better. Um, and we really want them to begin to address things one step at a time. Let's follow the card, let's walk through the process, let's do A, B, C, D. Let's not jump ahead, let's not make assumptions. Um, and how are you developing your logical, critical thinking? And, and the coach on that side, for the experiment side, they're asking a little bit more follow-up questions, right? They're trying to understand the thinking a little bit better, the knowledge threshold, and trying to confirm that the team member, the learner, is not making assumptions. So as we look at this, right, the, the oval there, that's the gray area, the knowledge threshold, and our coaching in this stage is really how do we walk our learner through that gray area, the I don't know stage out there. Here's Katie out there, one of the learners that we worked with up in Tennessee. They're going through that unknown gray area out there, and that's actually Angela, her coach who's responsible for teaching the four-step improvement kata within there. She's responsible for developing Katie and she's responsible for the results within there. So as she's running Katie through that knowledge threshold, that really is the, I don't know, let's go see, let's try something. And also beginning to watch out that Katie, the learner is not making assumptions, not jumping to conclusions. And we do want to create the environment where it's okay to try and it's okay to fail, right? And a failed experiment, as I'm looking at that, it's something that doesn't turn out as we expect it, right? We learn from it. If we don't learn from it, it really is a failed experiment. And as a coach, if someone's going to fail, we're responsible for their learning and we're responsible for their success. So if they fail, we want them to fail fast, fail cheap, and fail safe. They've got to be able to try, make mistakes, and learn from those. So as you look at this, and we're beginning to be in the experimental stage, this is where we have a little bit more, I call it situational feedback. Um, we're, we're trying to understand what the learner's thinking a little bit better out there. Um, and, and every learner is different. They'll have different focus areas. There are different needs that they have to practice on at different times in their piece. But the coach is really trying to help them understand um, and make it very visible the current state of the learner's thinking. They're telling you, the learner is really telling you, this is what I see, right? Once the learner's communicating with you, and that's on the visual storyboard, it's also some of your questions, open-ended questions, seeking to understand, that's when you as a coach can begin to formulate feedback, right? Something that's appropriate, something that's situational for that learner, right? And, and that, that feedback is really going to be predicated on, here's what we understand about the learner's current state, their current thinking out there. And then for us as a coach, where do we want that learner to be? Where is that gap that we would like to close? target and actual, that gap that we'd like to work with them. Um, yeah, well, I, I wish there was a manual. I really wish that feedback could be scripted out there. Sometimes it'd make it much easier out there, but this is really more of an implied skill, really built upon repetitions as a coach. And also it, it really is beneficial to have that second coach to learn that skill, to learn how to begin to evaluate current condition, where we'd like to, what gap we'd like to close, and how to begin to provide feedback to our learner, right? So really in the experimental side, it, it isn't about just asking the question, it's being able to interpret the questions and provide appropriate feedback. Like I said earlier, sometimes people go too far just asking the questions, the starter set, and sometimes they really aren't providing uh, constructive situational feedback. They are just 
they're just running through the card. Sometimes they're running through the card way too fast. So that's their cautionary piece. Then as we begin to look at this, we're beginning to look at a little bit of the mastery. This is the learner, the knowledge threshold of the learner. What are they understanding about the improvement kata process, right? Direction, current situation, target condition, and experimenting through. And then also for the learner, what are they learning about their process, the process that they're trying to improve, right? That's that knowledge piece. Um, and with the coach, the coach is really a, a lot more questioning this point, much more seeking to understand, understand what the learner is observing, what the learner is going to try to see how everything begins to fit together. Um, typically a little bit slower to respond. And obviously some coaches, it comes more naturally in terms of slower response. Sometimes it's difficult for some of the coaches to really stand back and not jump in or see an answer or begin to um, try to answer for folks. But it really is understanding the learner's thought process and letting the learner answer, right? When the learner answer, they are giving you their knowledge threshold. They are really telling you, yes, this is what I see. And on the other side, this is what I don't see. This is what I need to go out and try to learn. This is what I need to go out and try to change to see what happens. Part of the questioning out there is really beginning to look at some of the open-ended questions, right? Allows the learner to respond, allows them to use a coach to understand. And a lot of times in this, we'll use silence. Coaching is done one-on-one. -on -one, and as you look at this, if you're the coach and you have the learner and you ask them a question, there's not anybody else there that responds. You can allow them as much time as you like for them to think, for them to reflect. It will provide a lot of times pressure for them to answer, to tell you what their current situation is. And, and this goes back to that how do you develop that environment for trust, right? You really want them to open up. You want them to tell you what they're seeing out there. And typically, if you've built that up through repetitions of a starter Kaizen and also beginning to do a lot of experiments, right? There's nothing worse from discouraging thinking, discouraging people from taking responsibility than giving them an answer. So really in, in mastery, it's about asking the right questions, beginning to um, begin to bring out the learner's thoughts. Sometimes out there, some different other probing questions out there. Everybody seems to have different styles. The different folks that we coach with, that we work with second coaches, um, a lot of times they're, they're tell me more, what do you have in your mind? And one person, they would always just put, huh, huh, not directing them, not asking, but huh. And that was almost the response to tell me a little bit more. Help me understand what's going on. I don't think I have the full picture out there. Um, so I said, just as some of those items to begin to look at. So as we look at this, we begin to look at our coaching, our balancing act out there. We want to respect our team member. We want to really respect that learner out there. And as a coach, two things out there. Keep the learner thinking. They have got to be curious. They've got to be able to experiment. They've got to be able to try something. And on the other side, we're also responsible for the results. We're responsible for their success, for their experiments to iterate and get closer and closer to the challenge, begin to achieve the challenges by a series of target conditions that we're addressing. Um, and as we look at this, the learner has got to own the experiment. It's their thinking. It's, like I said, fail fast, fail cheap, fail safe. As long as the experiment isn't going to fail and be expensive, isn't going to fail and take a long time, isn't going to fail and be a safety hazard, I turn them loose. I let them try something out there. As a coach, a lot of times you do have to bite your tongue. Your expectation is, yeah, as I reflect back in my mind, yeah, yeah, 
when I was in that situation, when I had a similar knowledge threshold as you, I did the exact same thing and, and, and it crashed and burned. <laughs> but telling them versus allowing them to experiment, two different things, right? Let them learn through quick, small failures. Um, as, as a coach, right, we are walking them through the process and we are having them see. So as we go through the reflection, what actually happened and then what did you learn? That's where they're telling us a little bit more on what they see. When they talk about the obstacles, sometimes that's where they're telling us what they see out there in that process. And, and sometimes it really allows us an opportunity to begin to coach and develop them there. Um, sometimes we will provide corrective, correction, inputs out there, right? If they aren't following the path, as we begin to look at our improvement kata, uh, sometimes we'll have our guardrails in there where we begin to address those. And we're trying to also force them their, their reflection. What do they see? How do they deeply reflect and become a little bit better problem solving, a little bit better for eyes for the current situation, eyes for obstacles, eyes for waste, eyes for things that impede flow. As we look at this, kind of um, as a summary out there, um, it is a discipline process. We're trying to build that habit. We're trying to follow the process, follow the process, follow the process. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere in this piece, our anecdotal pieces, it seems like the higher you go up in the organization, <laughs> the, the more difficult it is to follow the process, to ask the questions out there. Um, and it is a learning. Everybody should go through learner, coach, and second coach. We had one organization that we worked with, and they wanted to grandfather all of their senior leaders in as second coaches. And it was, you had that come to Jesus meeting. No, this isn't happening. This is what I need you to do, and this is why I need you to do it, to begin to understand the process, to live a month in a learner's shoes, a coach's shoes, and begin to work on reflecting out there. And, and it was just great feedback as the company came back. Hank, I'm glad you made that do that, made us do that. I was, wasn't happy when you told me I had to do it, but um, I trusted you. Um, our cadence, our frequency out there, how do we begin to do it and build that habit by doing it every single day, right? Every single two days, whatever your cadence is, set it up, Typically set it up earlier in the day than later and make sure it happens. Um, a huge fan of having transparency and having the learner write everything down. Be able to write down and keep records of your experiments, your PDCA cycles. That allows the second coach to come in and begin to periodically evaluate what's happening in the coaching cycles with the coach and learner. And then it forces the learner to get their thoughts down. It forces them to articulate what they see. They're articulated. It's much easier to understand the current, can, current situation, what they're seeing, much easier to coach. Um, definitely reality. We're practicing in the game, in the gamba on real problems. This isn't a, a simulation or a paper exercise. Um, the coach. The coach is really addressing, here are the right questions to ask. Not on the answers, but here are the right questions out there. And it is one-on-one, -on -one, very individualized coach and learner. You're developing them toward their knowledge threshold through deliberate, consistent, repetitive problem solving. We're developing a habit. And as you look at this, why are we trying to do this, right? If we have a really good critical thinker, a really good problem solver, then all of a sudden the situation around us is dynamic. Our work environment is, is ever changing. If we're able to problem solve, it doesn't matter what's going on within our work environment. We understand how to um, define a problem. We, have, we, def we understand how to look at the contributing factors. We understand what obstacles might be in the way. We understand we're able to take a quick step and begin to learn. And that's what makes us stronger as an organization, long-term mutual prosperity. It's not the machines. It's not the buildings. What makes us different, what gives us a competitive advantage is if my team members, if my, in my organization, are much better, much stronger, much quicker problem solvers, 
I have a massive competitive advantage over other organizations. Um, the reflection, huge on reflection, right? Both good and bad on both the process and on the results. What worked well, what didn't work well. And then bottom line is, yeah, we're providing just a starting point. Here's the starter set. Here's the five questions. Here's how Toyota did it. They're not, you're not Toyota. Begin to adapt it. Make it your own process. As you begin to get a better coach, you begin to have mastery of it. It should be your own. You shouldn't be necessarily following a card, but you will be following the improvement kata. You will be following plan, do, check, act. Um, all right, I think we're right about 10 minutes left. Um, Nariza, if we have any questions. Yes, we do have, Hank. Um, we they would like to know how many classroom trainings are expected for the Carter process for the learner, the coach, and the second coach. For classroom training? Um, yeah. Usually, how much of classroom training is expected for the learner for the for this Carter process? Um, for the Carter process, usually we'll like for us, we'll do maybe a one day overview of it. We have some different simulations that allow um, al allow people to be exposed to it. And then you go to the Gemba. You begin to develop your, your visuals, your storyboard, and begin to try out there into that process. Um, you know, there, there's some upfront time where we're working on the challenges, making sure they align with your vision and getting appropriate tar conditions. But, um, but, but no, um, relatively short duration of classroom time for learning the kata process and it is it is learning in your process in your situation and y'all are learning together coach learner second coach okay i do not see any other questions posted on here so shall we wrap it up oh. Well, good. Well, well, thank you all for listening. It, it will be posted on our YouTube channel out there. Um, so be able to review should be a blast out there. And like Nariza said, next month will be our ASQ LED. Our new e-learning portal has about 20 modules on some of the different tools and principles of Lean. Um, and I said, if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. Fire me off an email. Be happy to do whatever I can to begin to get you a little further along on your journey. Thanks, Hank, for taking time to share with us this important and interesting information that we can apply to any business organization and share the real-time application and experience. As I said, Hank, presentation is now recorded and will be posted on the ASQ Lean Enterprise Division YouTube channel. And our next month's topic is e-learning for ASQ, and the presenter will be Frank. So hope to, hope to hear from you all next month. Thank you so much for joining.